Hey folks, Uniservo here. It's a beautiful October day, the first of the month. A few days ago, I was doing a basement clean out, ham radio estate. And yes, most of the stuff was ham related and RTTY, good stuff. Anyway, this odd duck was in the racks and uh, took a look at it and turns out it's interesting. This is a core memory box from a company called Diane Controls. You can see the uh, rather prominent logo there, and yeah, it is supposed to be, look kind of broken. I'm not sure what that's about. Anyway, Diane Controls. I guess I kind of, the name rang a bell a little bit, but I did a little more research, uh, and turns out they were an aerospace company started in the late 50s and lasted until the very early 2000s. It was started by a engineer called Bob Kotis, and he, apparently he had an awfully large patent portfolio, a lot of it having to do with magnetism, uh, electromagnetics, core memory, and stuff like that. And he formed a company in the late 50s and did a lot of aerospace work. And if you look here, you can see that, yes, that is a NASA sticker, Goddard Space Flight Center. And I assume IN-65 means inventoried in 1965. So this is a core memory box. And that was one of their big businesses, was, was uh, core memory. They eventually apparently got into printers and all sorts of unrelated stuff, but... Core memory uh, systems were apparently their thing. So anyway, you can see it's got a kind of a nice blink and lights panel here. Digit plane, local output register, 1 to 14. Yes, this is a 14-bit box. And if we look around, go to the back. And yes, that is the power supply. We'll look at that too. Oh, it's going to be a little hard to see. Let's get a little closer there. Magnetic core storage, 4K by 14. And uh, you can see it's uh, frequency 165 KC max. I wonder if that's how fast you can either write or read or generally access the core. I don't know. I don't have any information. We looked for a manual for this. Couldn't find it. So, uh, hey, you know, if one shows up, that'd be great. Anyway, go back to the front where it is a little more exciting. Yes, apparently this was probably used for maybe telemetry work for NASA, um, mid-60s. And, uh, well, you can see, here, let's go look at the panel closely. Operate standby. Uh, data register reference on off, I guess. I don't know. We've got the blinking lights, memory clear, manual sync. I'm not sure what that's for. Missing a knob. It's probably one of those Raytheon teardrop knobs. That's what I'll uh, that's what I'll replace that with. Now we can actually open this guy up too to see all the nice colorful modules. There is a little bit of foam there that needs attention. But these modules are very interesting. Okay, let's look at a couple of these modules that I popped out. The uh, most obvious things are these big blocks. You'll note there's uh, not much in the way of uh, support circuitry. That's because these, these blocks here, they were one of Diane's products. They're actually magnetic logic modules. And uh, you can see this one has some external transistors, but a lot of these are apparently full of toroidal transformers, uh, toroidal donut core transformers, that is, with all the resistors and transistors all potted. So yes, these things are solid. What's interesting is that I did actually find a little bit of data for these things on the Internet Archive. Not a lot, and I still don't know what, say, these specific modules do, whatever a DN8300 is or a AR30CR12. I don't know, but 
there is data out there for some of these modules. Very interesting, magnetic logic. It's slow, but it is very, very reliable. And that may be why uh, NASA and the government were such big customers of Diane. So yes, one problem is with this, there is a module missing. I don't know what it is. It, here, this slot was missing. Uh, so uh, the, unless I find a manual, I don't know if I'll ever be able to get this thing running. Okay, looking at the power supply, that's a nice power supply. It's heavy, uh, but kind of unremarkable. It's got a nice meter. You can actually check all the voltages. I'm not sure what three buttons for reset mean. Do you have to push them all three at the same time? Beefy breaker. And uh, yes, I, I probably assume because this whole core memory box is full of magnetic stuff, this thing probably has to really be good at putting out the current that it needs. So yes, very heavy, lots of iron in this. The back is fairly unremarkable too. Basically just AC input and a connector to the actual box, core box. And then that barrier, barrier strip, I'm not sure what that's for. Okay, well I popped the top and there's the core. Unfortunately, like a lot of core, it is all bundled up and really does not want to be opened up. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of not going to do it. Um, but yes, it is a, you can see it's almost the entire width of the chassis. And you can also see there's an awful lot of air down there. Um, but yeah, also, unfortunately, this got moused a little bit. I cleaned it up a little bit. It needs a real thorough cleaning. It's pretty fresh mouse, I'll have to say that. So I'm gonna get to this. I'm gonna clean this sooner than later to uh, prevent corrosion. This is an aluminum cabinet, I believe, so we don't want it all to turn into a white dust. But it doesn't look like the mice actually chewed anything. So that's good. In the back, we've got connectors that I don't know what they're for. Yep. <laughs> Assuming uh, some of it is the data bus, uh, maybe the BNCs are for timing, I don't know. The power cable, now it's pretty simple. It goes to the power supply. So, interesting device. I don't have any data on this. And of course, if any of you guys have data on it, I'd love to hear from you. Um, yeah, it'd be neat to get this thing running. Yeah, who knows if I'll ever get around to doing it because, yeah, it's just another project. But, hey, I thought this thing was certainly worth saving. You know, mid-60s computer stuff just really isn't all that common. All right, well, hey, I hope you liked the video. Yeah, the click, like, ring the bell, all that stuff. Share it around. And uh, I want to say thank you to my patrons. I do have a Patreon account. Trying to make my videos a little, little, uh, little cleaner, uh, I guess, a little more edited and such like that. We'll see how that goes. I am still working on the 370 reshoot. That's kind of turned into a whole big project again because I do want to make that a nice video. And yeah, I'm still kind of learning the ins and outs of basic editing. It's not that hard. It's just that, you know, the editor that I'm using is maybe not that great and trips up a little bit. And Well, you know how it is. Anyway, okay. Well, hey, if you have any qu uh, questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll take a look at them. And, uh, well, thanks a bunch for watching. Bye now.